This, of course, crosses a line in a different way. And with the evidence that is out there that has been obtained by ESPN, I'm sure the Mets are going to go and check into this, and they're going to look into these text messages that they have. They'll request to see them. And there are selfies in there, so you know it's Jared Porter. There are other pictures of him where he's laying in beds. And he did admit last night when he was reached by ESPN that he did send these text messages. So that's already there. And then when he was confronted about the pictures in the text thread, he said, well, yeah, I sent those inappropriate texts, but the pictures in there were like joke stock images. And it wasn't him. So that's obviously a lie. And I would think it would be a lie. Common sense would tell me that it was a lie. And Jared Porter is going to be probably let go, and rightfully so. And this is something that, you know, this isn't a, you know, one time trying to ask out a reporter on a date thing, hey, do you want to go get a drink? And then she said no. That's not what this is. This is a crazy, unhinged string of text messages that are quite frankly scary. Because anybody who thinks that that is something that's going to attract anybody to you has to be a little bit off. So it's unfortunate. It really is. It's unfortunate that this reporter had to go through this. And some of the things that she's told Jeff Passan of ESPN, fearing backlash, you know, not wanting to come forward because her home country does not uh, take kindly to anybody who has any sort of sexual accusations. I mean, it's just, it's sad. It stinks. It's tough. And the Mets are going to have to move on some point today, I would imagine. Good morning, Boomer. How are you? Yeah, good morning, G. Yeah, I've been better. This is These aren't the kind of the discussions that we were hoping that we'd get into today. We were thinking and maybe Deshaun Watson to the Jets as he likes the back page of the post when it says Jets, go get him. Uh, we thought maybe we'd start talking about a little bit about the championship games, maybe some more signings in baseball, maybe the Knicks performance yesterday, the Brooklyn Nets last night. And then you, you wake up and you read this article, and quite frankly – he didn't tell the Mets, man. And the Mets did not know. And if you and if you don't disclose something like this to the Mets when they are hiring you, uh, then basically you have kept something from them and you're going to end up having to lose your job. There's just no other way. There's just there's, We were talking about this in regards to Carlos Beltran, and I know that Joel Sherman wrote an article about this and comparing the two and which is worse. I mean, they're both bad, but... At the end of the day, you know, if you're going to be hired by a prospective employer, you have to tell them so they don't get blindsided like this. And, you know, they look like they look foolish. They look like they didn't do their due diligence hiring this guy. Well, they didn't, right? I mean, well, that's well, the that's, thing. Well, that's what you feel. But it also, you know, reading the Cubs, because this all happened when he was working with the Cubs, reading the Cubs account of this, they were never told of any of this. So they didn't know of any of this either. So this was something that was between two people uh, that now is out there, and it really, really makes Jared Porter look just absolutely awful. And I don't, you know, the, the Mets have no choice. The, the, the really, especially given, you know, Steve Cohen, he, he buys the team. He wants to talk about integrity. He wants to talk about running the team this way, a certain way. Obviously, they had their issues at point seventy two management, asset management. Uh, you know, th- this is this is just basically. It, it, he's going to have to. He's going to have to be let go, and right. it's it's, yeah. uh, yep. it's just a brutal, brutal story. And again, like I, I have no idea any, how these things initially were going back and forth, and how they were taken. All I know is what is being said now, and what is being said now is is not a good thing for Jared Porter, and it's not a good thing for the Mets. Yeah. So I would imagine some at some point today. Uh, they'll come to the realization that you know they can't have Jared Porter as their GM and the face of the franchise under under these un, under this situation. It's just no way. Yeah, and so it, it went on for a very long time. Uh, the reporter ignored Jared Porter's text messages, you know, the pictures that he was sending, and then finally, you know, she needed help because her English wasn't great, according to the story. She needed help in composing a text message to him that basically said, this is wildly inappropriate and you need to stop. And then at that point he said he stopped and he said that he was sorry. So, you know, I I just, you know, 60 some odd text messages to someone who's not responding to you when you're putting pictures of yourself in there. I mean, you have, I mean, that's what is really alarming to me because you want to hear what, the other side of the story is in every instance, not just this. You want to hear, you know, the other side of the story. But if that is to be, if that is fact, 
that he sent 60-some-odd unanswered text messages, including pictures of his genitalia that he sent and then a bulge in a bed and all of these things. I mean, there there's no defense to this, none whatsoever. There is no explanation that is going to be, okay, we'll keep you around, Jared. Hey, try not to do it again. That, I mean, so if the Mets are going to take some time, they'll look into it, and if they find out that the facts in this story are indeed facts and it's true, then he's got no shot. It's just the way that it is, and every nobody's going to argue that. So, I mean, it's one of these things where the timing of it's interesting because, you know, Jeff Passan says that, you know, he knew about this back when it was going on, but the reporter didn't want to say anything because she feared backlash and he wasn't going to report it and these things, you know, when, when this had gone on. But I guess she came forward when he got the general manager job because she said, I don't want him to abuse his power and this to happen to somebody else. She would feel guilty not saying something. Yeah, I, I just I, I just don't know any way, shape, or form that he can come back as the general manager no. of the Mets. You can't. No. I mean, no. I, the general manager is the face of the team. You know, like Brian Cashman is the face of the Yankees. You know, and uh, Lou Lamarillo, face of the Islanders. He has no shot. I just, it, you, you. Unless there's something we don't know that, that you know, defends him, which I don't believe. At this point, we have not been presented that. You know, and to me, you know, his, another thing that makes me think that he, it's not good for him is when he is reached by phone by ESPN and he says, yeah, uh, those, I didn't send any pictures. I did send some inappropriate text messages. And then they said, well, we've got the pictures. And he was like, oh, oh no, uh, those were stock images. Like, all right, now you're, you're lying to cover this up. They've got the evidence. You know, it's just not, it's not good. You know, the interesting thing is, is that this happened between these two people where other, I, I guess, I it sounded like Jeff Passan knew, and some people at ESPN may have known, but she wasn't. Was she working for ESPN? I don't think so. No, right, she was. So she's she, a foreign reporter so for a really newspaper, like a report foreign to, press, right? Like a a foreign press outlet. All right, so she had nobody really to report to. I, I guess she could have reported it to the Cubs because that's who he was working for. But like in other words, she wasn't working for the Cubs, right? And he was working for the Cubs. It wasn't right. one of those, like, you know, uh, you know HR, a, situation HR situation in a company. Like, yeah, In a company. This, this is like something that happened. And ultimately what it sounds like, it sounds like she felt like she was under siege. Yeah. And, and felt like it was better not to answer, but knew eventually that she was going to run into him somewhere along the line. Well, and, and people sometimes unfairly ask the question, well, why didn't you say something at the time or what were you thinking? And there's a lot of judgment that goes on in these situations that is just really unsavory. So the answers to those questions are out there, though, because they, they were asked. And she said that, one, she was trying to build her career and felt that there might be some backlash if she said that someone in the Cubs front office was doing this to her and maybe she wouldn't be around the other reporters. That was in her mind, which just sucks. You know, that type of thing out there is just horrible that people would think that, you know, they can't report something because they're going to lose their job. I mean, that is just that's severe stuff. You know, it's horrible to see in any uh, field. And then the other part of it is, you know, wherever her, as Jeff Passan says, her home country is, apparently... Anybody who is involved in any sort of sexual allegations, even if they are the victim, they are not looked upon with a fair eye. Let's put it that way. And, and, and that's another reason why she basically she's changed careers. She doesn't want her name out there. So, like, these are the reasons why she was just trying to avoid it. You know, and, and I can't even imagine being in that spot where you're getting bombarded with images like that and, and these text messages and then you're thinking, I can't tell anybody about this because my life might be ruined. Well, and the other thing, too, is that uh, obviously Jared Porter knew about all of this. He was right in the middle of all of sure. it. And he never said anything to the Mets about it. And maybe he never said anything to the Mets about it because there was there, there was nothing on a rec. There was nothing of record about it. In other words, he didn't get. Um, let go by the Cubs because of it. He didn't get let go by, you know, the Diamondbacks because of it. He there, there was no record of any of it other than the actual messages themselves to the woman. Sure. And and then the woman basically gave the 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 messages and showed the messages to ESPN. So it's like one of it's like a really kind of weird way this whole thing has come about. And maybe Jared Porter felt like it was not a part of my professional record, so therefore I don't have to discuss that with you. I'm just trying to figure out from the Mets' standpoint how they're going to well, 
you know, they're going to navigate this, but they're going to navigate it. And I saw what, you know, Sandy Alderson said, and we now are aware of it. We had not been aware of it until this story had come out. Nobody had told us there was no record of it anywhere. But now we see it, and it would be really hard. I, I can't see in any way, shape, or form that Jared Porter could be the face of the New York Mets moving forward simply because the text, when you read them and you read the articles surrounding it, uh, really puts him in a just an absolutely terrible light. Yeah, I mean, I, I know that really with stories like this, it's about Jared Porter. It is about the reporter in this instance. And, you know, the Mets, unfortunately, is going to become about the Mets. And this is one of those things well, the that Mets, you have to do. Right. One thing, one thing only. Right, Come right, on. ex exactly. But, you know, people are going to have questions about, you know, was it able to, were the Mets in a position to obtain extra information about Jared Porter and then didn't do a good job in doing that or not? You know, because I remember specifically when Jared Porter was hired, it was like smart guy, rising star, great dude. Everybody loves him that he works with. All of these things, right? So, like, when you're vetting somebody and then, like, that stuff's getting out there, I, did anybody, did the people well, in the Cubs no, organization have any idea? Did no. people not want to say it? Like, well, that's the thing. There's yeah. no record of it. I know. There, there's no but, record of it, and there was nothing that the, the Cubs did anything about because they didn't know anything about sure, it. Sure, I know. So if they didn't know anything about it, and the Diamondbacks didn't know anything about it, and he went from Theo Epstein to uh, to Arizona to New York, you know, you would think as the New York Mets, if the Cubs hired him, and then he went to uh, Arizona, and the Diamondbacks hired him, and that was an upward move. Now the next logical thing is for him to take a GM job, and we want this guy because he's young and, you know, because of his background and because who, who he's worked for. And we asked Theo Epstein about him. We asked the Diamondbacks about him. We did hit the background search, and there's none of this is anywhere simply because this woman didn't have anywhere to go. Yeah, right. So, I mean, I think that, you know, if this were a, a relationship that he had had that was reciprocated, and some text messages came out that were lewd, we'd be talking about something totally different. This is not a relationship that was reciprocated. This reporter wanted no part of this from the evidence that we're looking at now. She wasn't interested in him. She never responded back to him outside of the selfie that I guess she sent back to him, like just like a normal selfie, because he sent her a selfie. And then she laughed, and she's thinking like, okay, this guy maybe is nice. And then all of a sudden he goes from nice to total creep. And and then he's sending, you know, lewd images to her, the unsolicited that I don't even know how someone's brain goes that route. So, I mean, I, I don't know. It's 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 sad. But the bottom line and I hate saying the bottom line is because everybody says that. But the fact of the matter is the bottom line is whatever cliche you want to use. He's got to go. The Mets have to do the work. Make sure that everything that in, is in that story checks out because that's only the fair thing to do. Make sure it checks out. Take a day. And then if it seems to be accurate, then they have to move on because this yeah. is just this can't this can't be. Well, the, the thing that is really. I, I, I don't say eye opening, but the thing that, that tells you exactly, I think, how Sandy Alderson feels about this and how Steve Cohen's going to feel about this. I'm sure he's already been uh, made aware of this is that. Sandy goes to Great Lakes saying, we had no idea, yeah. and we just found out about it. Yeah, no, of course. And so I mean, it, since they have no idea and they just found out about it, then they could basically say that Jared Porter wasn't honest with them when he was you know, applying for the job or being interviewed for the job. So I, I don't see any uh, recourse for the Mets other than to say goodbye. Yeah, that's it. So, I mean, you're talking about a guy who got his dream job, worked his way up through baseball, was a part of the Lindor deal, and starting a new era in Mets baseball that everyone was excited about. And this morning, his career is essentially over. doesn't mean that he can't work his way back at some point, whatever route he wants to take. But, I mean, you're talking top of the mountain to bottom of the barrel in a matter of days because of his inappropriate and borderline crazy behavior uh four or five years ago all yeah, right it's amazing i wanted to come in here this morning just talk me about too how i know I, I just i saw this uh, you know of course you know it happens last night after i go to sleep i you know i wake up to several text messages look at it on twitter you know i see the you know the sad mr met faces and the sideways helmet image on the ground and all the things that they use to 
you know, put in stories when there's scandals, and I'm going, oh, no. You know, here, here we are again. But uh, this is something that I'm sure the Mets will deal with swiftly. There's really no other route, unless there's some inaccuracies in the story, which there's been no reason to believe that there are to this point. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And don't forget to hit the red bell so you're notified when we have new content.